which the Nazarene started in the fall of 1941. And in the spring of 1942, it was organized into an organized church on February 15, 1942. And the pastor from the Paris Nazarene Church and the evangelist went ahead and organized it. And a class of 15 members were taken in at the time. And um, it was Reverend and Mrs. Robert Hale, Evelyn Carroll, Mrs. Loda Carroll, Mr. Herman Carroll, um, Mrs. Virgil English, Bill Richmond, who was my cousin, and Nellie Bartley, who was me, Norma Carroll, Mrs. Victorine Bartley, who was my mother, Donna Hudson, Jesse Schatz, Clarence Remlinger, Irene Remlinger, and Louise Remlinger. And this is the minutes from the, that was taken the day it was organized. And it says, the blessing of God was outpoured and his presence was felt by all. An election of officers was also held at this meeting with the following results in the order elected. Reverend Elston was the acting chairman with Reverend Kozad and Brother Cale, a layman from Paris, Brother Dan Belts and Herman Carroll serving as tellers. The board of trustees was Sister Carroll, Brother Hale, and Sister Stover, who was my aunt. Board of stewards was Sister Carroll, Sister Stover, and Sister Bartley, which is my mother. And the Sunday school superintendent was the pastor's wife, Mrs. Louise Hale. In a church that small, you have to use whoever you can to hold offices. A class of 15 members is a very small church. And um, Reverend Robert Hale was our pastor from September 1941 until September 1945. And then Reverend Murdy Melton came. She was a school teacher at the Southside School and she was also our pastor from 1945 till 1953. Then Reverend John Berrick came in 1953, and he was our pastor till 1961. And then the Hales came back and was our pastor from 61 till 65. And Reverend Reddick was our pastor from 65 to 67. And Reverend Herschel Burton was our pastor from 1967 till 1976. And Reverend Doug Romine from 77 until 83. And Reverend Dennis Wright, who is our current pastor, came to be our pastor in 1983, and he still is. <laughs> and I hope he will be for a long time to come. And that's a picture of the beginning of the church. That was before we ever moved to town and got into it. <laughs> it uh, started with a tent meeting in that little triangular park down there by the Trinity Church. And uh, at the close of the tent meeting, they rented a little building at the corner of 7th and Locust, which is no longer there. <laughs> It wasn't any bigger than my living room <laughs> or this kitchen. And uh, and so then it moved down to where Bennett and Schroeder's law offices is now. And then we bought the building on the corner of 4th and Plum. And in 1946, when Murdy Melton was our pastor, we bought that building from the American Legion and moved our church into it. Now it's been bulldozed away and the Baptist church has built their parking lot out there because it was an old building anyway. But uh, then in 1977, we built the church where we are now. These are all pictures of it being built. This is a Sunday school class. My daughter is now, well, she graduated with your dad. <laughs> she was in his class. And there she is as a little toddler in her Sunday school class. <laughs> and that's my mother and sister Hale. And that's the Easter, the children on Easter 1955. These are former pastors and evangelists. And this is how big the church got by 1948. Oh, my. <laughs> that was the Sunday school. Look at all the children we had. And uh, it just grew and grew, and it's growing now. And we have a lot of uh, new people now. We have a deputy sheriff and his family and people that owns Arby's in Terre Haute. And this people are coming to us from everywhere. And they always say when they walk in the door, they feel the love among the people. And uh, so I'm thankful for our church and what it has meant to me and my family. I was like a lot of kids when I was a teenager. I didn't want to go to church. I wanted to go everywhere else and do everything else. And my mother said, as long as she was my boss, she said, no, you'll go to church. And when the doors were open, we were there. <laughs> Maybe we didn't want to be, but we were. <laughs> she wouldn't have it any other way. But of course, after she died, why, some of us just went our own way and 
did what we wanted to do. But a year after she passed away, she died in 1956. And a year after that, when I was having my fourth child, I went back to church and gave my heart to the Lord. And he's been so good to me and taking care of my family. Um, you may or may not remember Herman Wallace that played basketball yeah. and football with yeah. you. He's one of my grandsons. Yeah. His dad's name's Herman, named after my husband's father. And uh, He's my brother's age. Yes. And then Ryan is a freshman this year. Mm -hmm. he's, his picture showed up in this paper. I was really shocked. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, our church has been a giving church and a church where you can uh, we help people if we have anyone who comes to our church and they can't pay their bills and they have a hard time heating their homes or anything we just all give money and take care of them and anybody that has a lot of hospital bills or things like that or a lot of sickness in the family we have food poundings for them ever so often and we carry in great loads of groceries <laughs> so our church is really a giving church and um, these are the Hales in their older years and that's Sister Melton that came second and that's Nell Smitley that was one of our leaders in our church and this is the Burtons that was there in the 60s and I thought I had a picture of Reverend Romine but yeah that's Reverend Romine and Reverend Hammond he, he headed up the building of our new church he laid the plans and drew up the plans and everything. And uh, our church is down at the end of, uh, almost at the end of South 9th Street. When was that church built? 1977. Wow. And uh, right now we're trying to raise enough money to enlarge it because it isn't quite big enough for everybody we have. <laughs> so we're trying to raise the money to build a new sanctuary and then we're going to take the sanctuary we have and partition it off into some more Sunday school rooms because we don't have enough we have to have one Sunday school class over in the annex where we usually hold showers and parties and things <laughs> how long did you say that you've been attending your church since 1942 and then I kind of quit when I went to work I had to quit high school and go to work to help my mother take care of my younger sisters and when I went to work, I had to work on Sundays, so I didn't go back to church until 1957. And what are your baptism rituals at your church? We usually baptize out in a, a flowing creek or something. We have, I was baptized at Twin Lakes when I was a kid. <laughs> wow. But uh, we usually go out to, we've got several people who are farmers, and we usually go out to someone's farm and they put a bunch of bales of hay there for people to sit on, you know, and and watch. And we usually have a baptism. We put in a baptismal, but nobody wanted to use it. So we finally just took it out and sold it. <laughs> um, how would you compare your Christmas and Easter ceremonies then to now? Well, back in the old days, we'd usually put on a play, and all the little kids would say poems. And we still do sometimes, but mostly for Christmas, our choir sings a cantata and Easter. Our choir usually sings a cantata for Christmas and Easter. And my son Herman, he's the choir director. And right now he's going to sing in the community choir that uh, the Christian church is putting on. Mm -hmm. um, what's your most memorable event at your church? I think probably the day that it was organized. 1942. I remember that so plain. I was only 11 years old, now I'm 67, but <laughs> I remember that so plain <laughs> because my mother was there and everything, and I tell you, when you lose your mother, you, you just about lose everything. <laughs> um, do you know what, like, the approximate size of your church is now to when it started out? Well, when our church started out, it was organized with 15 members, but... Um, I don't know how many members now, but I know it's well over a hundred. We just took a bunch of new members in last Sunday. Jerry Parsley and his wife, and Harry and Gay Lynn Crouch, and a whole bunch of people. <laughs> um, is your church involved in any community services with Marshall? Yes. 
the last Wednesday night of each month, our pastor and uh, some of the men in our church and even some of the women, they go around town and do things for people. They trim people's hedges, they go up and wash the police cars, and they just do all sorts of community things because our pastor feels like that that's what we should do. He said, if we just stay in our own building, we're not telling anyone anything about our faith. <laughs> but he says, if we go out and help people, we're sharing our faith with people and our love for the community. Um, how many youth groups does your church have? We have one youth group. It's called NYI International. It's Nazarene Youth International, and they have a meeting every Wednesday night while we're having prayer meeting in the church. They have their meeting over there, and I think Jared Ferris is in charge of it now. Is it for kids and adults, or? No, it's for teenagers. For teenagers. Yeah, from the time they reach their teens until they're either married or up in their 20s, they're involved. Because Herman Randall's 20 now, and when he comes home, he's in it. <laughs> yeah. When did your church start? first having youth group? Well, we had youth group when I was just a kid. It was called NYPS, was Nazarene Young People's Society, but it's changed now because our church is international now. Mm -hmm. We used to be a small denomination, but now we're all around the world. We're in every country practically that there is. We're in all the former Soviet countries. We're in Vietnam. We're in China. We have missionaries all around the world, so they're called Nazarene Youth International now. Um, what's the longest term that a pastor has um, been at your church for? Okay, this pastor we have now has been here since 83, and this is 98, so he's been here 15 years. Wow. 15 years next month. <laughs> and I hope we can keep him another 15. I teased him one day, he said, I want you people to tell me if you think I've been here long enough and I said, no, I want you to be here as long as I live. <laughs> okay. Um, is there anything else that you know, anything else you would like to add? Well, I just, uh, I just feel like our church is a very giving church and uh, a very loving church. And uh, I feel like that if you have a need and you, you're involved in our church, even if you're not a member, if you're involved at all and you have a need, our church people will take care of it. We always have. And um, Richard Davis has been on the police force and he has been really sick. In fact, he's been so bad we were afraid we were going to lose him. And the doctor won't let him go back to work. <clears throat> so we've had several food poundings for them and, and done things for them because if he can't go back to work, you know, it isn't easy. Yeah. Rachel's their daughter, and Eric's their son. Their oldest son's Herman's age, and he's out of school. But uh, they just uh, they just don't have any way to get any help, so the church tries to help them all we can. Because when you can't work, you just don't have any money coming in, and it's, it isn't easy to live and pay your bills if you don't have any money coming in. Do you have any questions? <laughs> Not really, I think you covered most of it. <laughs> okay. okay.